MSI is all in and they declared an all-out war on its competition when it comes to uh, performance and enthusiastically driven motherboards. And in the past months I've reviewed a couple of their newly released lineup of motherboards and, and I was impressed and cautiously optimistic about their new manufacturing process but today they sent me the MSI Meg Z390 Ace and whoa they are serious they are dead serious about the gaming community and in a chilling twist in a market which is drowned in superlatives I caught myself wondering is there such a thing as too much? Alright, so let's start with the obvious. The Meg Z390 Ace is an ATX motherboard, meaning 24.4 cm wide for 30.5 cm long. It is powered by an LGA1151 CPU socket, which can run both 8th and 9th generation of Intel iCore processors. VRM-wise, well, that's what MSI wanted to focus on. We have a crazy 13-phase configuration, 12 of which are dedicated to power our CPU, and that will provide us with the most extreme and stable overclocking experience imaginable, but more on that later. Taking a closer look to its heatsink, at first glance I was a little bit taken aback and disappointed not to see the MSI new extended oversync design that uh, they had showed off in the MAG and MPG series motherboard, uh, but on the other hand, these are really heavy, thick and tall heatsinks. Actually, I don't think I've ever seen heatsinks that and of course I had to push it to its limits and I ran a range of overclocking stress tests on the 9th generation i5, i7, i9, all of which did not show any thermal throttling. I did see a little bit more heat, of course, on the i9 at around 5.1 GHz, but again, no thermal throttling and therefore MSI brilliantly delivered on their performance uh, pretend of this motherboard and in an absolute spectacular way so kudos to MSI for this. Memory wise we have the usual dual channel configuration which can support up to 64 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM overclockable up to 4.4 gigahertz. Keep in mind that lately Asus has released BIOS updates for their motherboards which will allow dual channel configuration to uh, support up to 128 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM in 32 gigabyte sticks so I would not be surprised if MSI did exactly that in the future. Staying in the memory we have a three-way M.2 solid state drive configuration. One with direct access to the CPU and two which will transit through the chipset. Of course our Z390 chipset is obtained ready meaning that all of our M.2 solid state drive can swap data up to 32 gigabit per second but of course with those kind of speeds you will have some overheating and most certainly some thermal throttling, especially for the M.2 solid state drives, which are located close to our video cards. But let's not panic just yet, because we do have our third M.2 solid state drive equipped with a double thermo padded heat shield. And this is the very first time I see a double padded configuration thingy, and I love it. I think that this is something we should uh, see more of on different motherboards across the whole manufacturing market. And uh, yeah, a, a really good point for MSI to try to innovate in this space. But also I want to note that even though the very first M.2 solid state drive on this motherboard has a direct connection to the CPU and that one has to transit through the chipset, I would still put my bootable device under the thermo heat shield, simply because I'm really uh, afraid of thermal throttling with M.2 solid state drive which are too close to the video cards which obviously uh, are the main heat producer in your build. Export wise we have six third generation PCIe Expresses, three single speed single slot and three 16 slots with different speeds. Note that only the first one can deliver up to 16 full bus speed and therefore in a single GPU configuration this is where you want it to be for optimal performances. In a dual GPU configuration you want the two first 16 slots to be populated and they will be sharing their bandwidth delivering a 8x8 full bus speed. And lastly if you go for a three-way GPU configuration we will find ourselves in a 8x4 
by four configuration. So even though MSI advertises their uh, Z390 Ace as a three-way motherboard, three-way video card motherboard, this is not the case. And I mean, technically you could, but you'll find yourself with an eight by four by four full bus speed, which is very far from delivering optimal performances from dedicated video cards. So in a sense, I would keep this motherboard in mind only for one or two video cards maximum, which is already a lot. And that does not only apply to the um, MSI Meg Z390 Ace, but it applies to any Z chipset powered motherboard. All right, so moving to our back IO. First, I want to note the presence of an integrated IO shield, which is always, always a great idea. And starting from the left, we have a clear CMOS and BIOS button, which is pure luxury when it comes to this kind of motherboard. We have four second generation USB plugs, which can all transfer up to 480 megabit per second. We have one backlit gigabit Ethernet plug, two 3.1 second generation 10 gigabit plugs, including a type C for first generation 3.1 USB plugs, which can all transfer up to five gigabit per second each. And we also have a 802.11 AC Wi-Fi dual band adapter, which can transfer data up to 1.73 gigabit per second, and which does include a fifth generation Bluetooth adapter. Finally, we have our usual Realtek 1227.1 channel audio adapter right here. All right, so this is where I really got surprised about this motherboard because I think this is the very first time I see it. I have to, to, to maybe take a closer look to what I've reviewed in the past couple of years, but there is no integrated display outputs. You have uh, this empty space, but you don't have an HDMI or a display port. And, and, and that, that makes sense. And I think that's a good call coming from MSI because um, if they are going to focus this motherboard on enthusiasts and on pure overclocking power, then you want to dedicate all the available faces to that effect, to the CPU. And let's face it, if you are a true enthusiast, you will never be gaming on the integrated GPU of your processor. You will be having a discrete video card. All right, so SATA-wise, we have our usual six third generation SATA plugs, which can all transfer data up to six gigabit per second, and which can support zero, one, five, or 10 red configuration. Front connector-wise, most importantly, we have two USB second generation plugs, two USB 3.1 first generation connectors, and two 3.1 second generation Type-C, which again is a first. I don't think I ever seen a motherboard which provided two uh, 3.1 second generation type C front panel connector. I think this is awesome and big kudos, big, big kudos to MSI for this. All right, so we've just seen the general aspect of our motherboard and we're gonna jump right into the enthusiastness uh, or enthusiast friendliness of this board. And this is where there is so much to talk about. Every manufacturer is trying to uh, squeeze in some enthusiastic, friendly features here and there to keep the dream alive. But here, MSI went all in. Um, they, <laughs> they, they were shameless and tried to pack as much enthusiastic uh, features as possible on an ATX motherboard to the point where, like I said in the intro, I wondered if it was too much. It's really, really packed. First, we have our seven PWM fan connectors, one of which can be used uh, with a water pump and only one. And that's one regret I have because with such an enthusiastically driven motherboard, you shouldn't be surprised to see users trying to squeeze in uh, a, a two custom water cooling uh, system in there. So I was a little bit surprised. Uh, maybe a second water pump connector would have been welcome. Uh, but my critique does not stop there. If we look right beneath our side heat sinks, we have a couple of LEDs which will indicate us if our fan and pump connectors are in PWM or DC mode. And I'm not certain how useful that is, especially when they are placed deeply under uh, the heat sink. I'm not sure of the visibility benefit of this, so yeah. On the side of our motherboard, we have two big backlit start and reset buttons, which I think is a very, very good touch. I hate to have those tiny, tiny 
pen pointer buttons that are hidden somewhere here. It's, it's obvious, they're backlit it, you cannot miss them. Right beneath it, we have something I really like, the overclocking wheel. That's what I call it anyways. I'm sure MSI has a very fancy name for that. Uh, but basically what we have here is 11 positions, which are linked to 11 overclocking profile. Every profile will adjust its overclocking range depending on what CPU you are operating on this board. And I have to admit, this is really cool. I, at first, you know, I was not, because this is the first time I'm playing with it, uh, I thought it was a bit geeky and kind of another selling argument. But after using it on my i5, i7 and i9, I was impressed on how fast and how safe it was to really push your processor to its limits without burning it or without, you know, causing any kind of definite damage to your motherboard. It was just absolutely seamless. For example, uh, when I tried uh, my i5 9600K, from the between the first boot to overclock it to five gigahertz, it took me about 20 seconds. So this is another real kudos to MSI. Because not only they have uh, a bunch of phases, 12 dedicated phases to our CPU, but they also had um, good, easy to use overclocking features. So really, 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 really nice. All right, moving ahead, troubleshooting wise, we got it all. We have a QLED screen, which precisely informs us on whatever is going on on our board, good or bad, an easy debugger for even more insight, just in case of issues. So kudos, kudos. All right, so aesthetical wise, let's first note the presence of an RGB strip right on the roof of our HiO housing. In addition, we have a couple of Mystic Sync compliant RGB connectors right here and an RGB addressable connector right there. But of course, this is an enthusiast driven motherboard, so this is not enough. And MSI added a Corsair connector, which will allow us to connect our motherboard to Corsair RGB and fan products. So yes, indeed, I know what you're thinking. You can use this motherboard indeed to power an awesome Christmas tree during your holidays. So in conclusion, the Meg MSI Z390 Ace, right? Ace will cost you anywhere between $250 to $275 before taxes at the time of this review. And I'll start by what I regret. In the beginning of this review, I said there is sometimes such a thing as too much. And I'm gonna explain myself. The fact that MSI has advertised and pretended that this board could run comfortably a three uh, GPU configuration, it's a Z390 powered motherboard. There are simply not enough PCIe lanes. So I would definitely argue that it is not really the case. Technically you could with AMD cards since it's only a three-way crossfire, um, I would really advise against it. Also the fact that we have those little uh, LEDs next to our PWM slash pump connectors. Usually I'm not sure how useful that would be, at least for me, but the fact that it's hidden under a heatsink on top of anything else makes it completely invisible and therefore useless. I think that they could, we could have gone without it and save ourselves and themselves a couple of bucks. And for the rest, I will also regret the fact that we do not have a second water pump connector, especially when you're talking about such an enthusiastically driven motherboard. But, but that's not deal breakers. It doesn't take away the fact for me that this is probably the best enthusiastic motherboard there is at that price range. It brings on the table so many things, but the very first thing we need to notice here is the overclockability of this motherboard. The fact that we have 12 dedicated phases on our CPU, the overclocking wheel, that's what I call it, that's what I'm gonna keep calling it. It's awesome because not only you have the physical aspect of it, you have the phases which really give a lot of stable energy, but it's so easy to use and the combination of both is just absolutely awesome and, and really gives such a nice dimension to performance. Really ease of access, ease of overclocking, and that is where the gold of that motherboard is. And for the rest, it's all bonuses, you know, the integrated IO shield, the fact that we have two type C's, uh, front panels, etc., etc., etc. So yeah, um, if I am a first time builder and uh, I'm not too big on enthusiastic uh, driven features, I wouldn't go for that. I would go for cheaper, 
I'd stay around 150, 160 dollars and go for, you know, the boards I've reviewed in the past months, you can find a bunch of good candidates for that. But if you are an enthusiast builder, somebody who's looking uh, for the best of the best, overclockable, performant, reliable, solid, good looking motherboard, this is at this price bracket, this is where your money wants to be. And I think that MSI really delivered on this, I, despite Despite the little critics I had in the beginning, this is still the very best motherboard at that price range for what it does.